Welcome to another episode of Wine Guide TV with your host Dan Sims and my esteemed colleague I Ben say esteemed. Edwards. I had to. Today is all about rosé. A revolution mm, like a, <clears throat> is coming. Is that not Ben? A revolution of rosé is coming. The rosé revolution is coming, Dan. In fact. We're celebrating rosé for a couple of reasons. One of them is because on 30th of November, we're tweeting up rosé. And if you want to know more about that, you can go to rosewinerevolution.com. The reason for it is that it's a bit of a celebration of the drier styles of rosés. Yeah. Because, let's face it, a lot of the wines that are being sold out there that are being made are quite pumped up in colour, pumped up in sugar, and probably don't have that much fun to them in our humble opinion. Exactly. Well, look, as a category, rosé has been growing exponentially over the last few years. That sounds like a lot. It it, it is a lot, actually. It's it's a very long word, so I'm assuming it's a lot. (laughs) But as a style, I mean, I think rosé is one of those wines that we drink with our eyes, you know, as much as we eat with our eyes, because because it looks good. It looks good, you know, and also, and our idea of what great rosé is so very much about what sort of tends to be led by the colour. And as you probably can see, it's a little bit di- always a little bit difficult on camera, is the colours of some of these rosés, are, you know, some are lighter, paler, darker, or having a different sort of a character to them. So today we're going to be looking at sparkling. We're going to Spain, to France, and of course we're finishing off with the highlights, all from Australia, because we're fiercely Australian. So we're going to start with a little Jance Rosé heading down to Tasmania. Now this one, you can see, That's hopefully, it. is an incredibly pale. Um, and it's made by a little bit of skin contact with the Pinot Noir grapes and a little Pinot Meunier, from my understanding. And it's really just about adding just a little bit of extra zadza to the style. Again, you, even though it's sort of looking quite pale, there's a lot of flavour to the wine. So it's got some great, great depth, a little bit of character. And again, coming to summer, Christmas time. You know, effectively, I hate to say I'm talking about Christmas wines, but as a little bubble, get you started, a little bit of rosé, super duper. Now, this is very well received internationally yeah. as well. Tom Stevenson, who is the champagne god slash guru, whatever, he loves the Jan's NV rosé, and I think it's a beautiful wine, especially for the price. Yeah, it's sitting around lots of that $30, $35 dollar mark, super drink. Now, we were talking earlier about maybe giving these wines points, but I, you know, I think we're actually not going to this week because this is going to be all about drinking pleasure. They're all sitting around the same sort of level, but this is all about different styles. Yeah, the point spread here would be between 88 and 90 points, and so really it's a pretty narrow band. Rather than worrying about that, what we'll look for is a style. Now, going to the Chivite, we're looking at Garnacha, Grenache, as we know it in Australia so fondly. Gran Fuego is the wine. We love this wine. It's a bit of go-to wine, pizza wine, any day drinking wine. Quite deep in colour, so it's yeah. probably had a little bit of still red wine blended back into it, so it gives it that lovely, bright, vibrant sort of pink hue. But as a price, it's super. It's around that fifteen to seventeen dollar mark. You know, over it really you're just an easy drink, sort of sitting outside, smashing in a couple of bottles of rosé. Off you go. Very easy, not super uh, complex, not super over the top. You don't have to think about it. You just have to sit back, enjoy it, and drink it. And not necessarily in moderation. Gee, I've never said that before. Now. <laughs> That's from the Navara. Uh, you know, it's it's not complicated wine. It's just good drinking. A little bit of a favourite of ours from the Cote de Provence. Now, down in Provence, southern France, they drink rosé by the gallon. It is unbelievable how much they go through. They love it. They're slaves to it. Everywhere. And they drink it everywhere. In fact, you'll go down to the south of, south of France and you'll have nine to ten wines by the glass. They'll be rosés and you'll have one or two whites and one or two reds. It's crazy. But this is a great example of it. The pink hue is a really delicate little blush. The flavour's all there. It's got that strawberries and cream, but it's got that underlying sort of savoury, dry, textural minerality to it. And just really lovely drinking. It's, uh, it, look, it's a bit of a personal favourite of mine. I love this wine. It's been on a number of wines that we uh, consult to. It's I know why it's your favourite. Ex- well, because of the name. Because you love saying real It yes, sounds powerful, but it's not really. But uh, it's a great little drink, and I really love it. Now, speaking of drinking with your eyes, look at the label. <laughs> this La- next one. It's La Boheme. It's a super, very pretty label. Made by De Bordelais. Very famous at Yarra Valley. Yeah, it's it from, come from the Yarra Valley. Pinot Noir. Light, again, a little bit lighter in colour. Just a really nice, approachable, easy drinking rosé. Now, Steve Weber, who's the outgoing chairman of the Royal Melbourne Wine Show, is uh, one of the main protagonists when it comes to the whole rosé wine revolution.com. He's really driving it. It's not just about Debord, so mm. it's about a whole lot of different producers making this dry style. And this is all about Pinot Noir. And it's got that lovely sort of 
fragrance of yeah. Pinot, but then under the liner, there's a lovely savoury, dry finish to and it. What I quite like about it is that there's, it's kind of low in colour, but it has, a, has a, delivers a little bit more flavour than what I kind of, you'd kind of expect. Yeah. I think that comes from the Pinot Noir. The Pinot yeah. Noir really does give it this sort of sweet, sort of almost cherry sort of fruit. Just delicious. Moving along, we're going now. to Foster <laughs> a Rocco. Now, uh, just a quick thing. These are a couple of mates of ours, but they're doing great things. This is Hecate Sangiovese made in a rosé style. Dan, do you want to tell us more? Now, we're going to say that the guys who put this together, Adam Foster and Lincoln Rocco Riley, uh, put this together. Both come from a restaurant hospitality sommelier background. Um, sourcing the fruit from Heathcote, really all about rosé, but this is about approachability, easy drinking, put it on the table, bang Appro in a couple of bottles. Approachability with a caveat, which is that yeah. it's a richer sort of a style, and I think that's got a lot to do with the terroir of Heathcote. Heathcote, warmer in a lot of regards, and, and also, it gets yeah. this weight and And texture. also you're seeing a little bit of element of the Sangiovese, you're seeing a hint of savouriness to it, but there's some good fruit sweetness behind it. Yeah. It's a nice little drink. Yeah. Now back to Tassie, we started with Tassie, we're going to finish with Tassie, Derwent Estate. This is um, just a really lovely, bright, vibrant, you know, strawberries and cream, classic example of rosé. Um, but here, what we're getting that we didn't so much get in the others is acid crunch, almost mm. like a green apple sort of acid crunch to the finish of the wine. It's been really well constructed. Julian Alcorso makes this. He makes a lot of wine in Tasmania, but he makes a very, very good fist of this particular wine. Do you like it's it? It's a great little drink. It's a, it's a Tasmania rosé. I don't think Tasmania, I think, really cold. So it's kind of funny thinking, when I think rosé, I think hot weather. But it's a nice, really great little way yeah. to sort of top and tail the little tasting. Yeah, definitely. And with this particular wine, it's got just a bit more sweetness than the others. Yeah. But because you would be drinking this quite cold, I think you'd barely notice the sweetness. And also because it's got that acid backbone to sort of freshen it up, but gives a nice little balance to it. Yeah. So if you love rosé, and we do love rosé clearly, um, go to Rosé Wine Revolution, get on Twitter November 30th, you can get a bottle at home find out more about it on their website and you know, Giddy up. drink more of it, it's good stuff. <laughs> Cheers. We'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>